Hi, Chris Holmes at uh, Coaching Guy from Maryland back to talk with you about alignment. I just love Proverbs 29.18 says, Where there is no vision, the people will perish. Where there is no vision, the people are going to perish. Uh, do you remember the, uh, the Eagles, the band from back in the 1970s, had a hit almost every year? Uh, let's see, 1972, a big hit was um, Take It Easy, Take It Easy, Don't Let the Sound of Your Own. And then uh, 1973 was Desperado, Won't You Come. So, you can get the whole six CD set for only $29.99. Call now. Well, <laughs> so, the Eagles. All right, the Eagles. You remember them? Don Henley was their uh, lead singer and their drummer. And he, um, he developed uh, really severe back problems from playing the drums and singing at the same time. There was something about the way he held his body and in this kind of unnatural position, you know, playing the drums and singing in the microphone that, um, that threw him out of alignment and caused some damage to his spine and was very painful for him for a long time. Maybe some of you all know that same kind of pain. And you know what it's like when you're driving your car, right? And the, um, it's out of alignment. Either, you know, it kind of pulls one side or the other because the wheels aren't, aren't working together. Um, and uh, or the the steering wheel starts to shake or um, something like that. Uh, we know what it's like, what it feels like, to be out of alignment. And what I'm suggesting, what I've been thinking quite a bit about lately, is how many ways our congregations are out of alignment, and how many times we awkwardly bend to accommodate everybody and everything and wind up way out of alignment from the vision and the mission of the congregation. So that's my starting point, believing that most of our congregations are somewhat out of alignment or way out of alignment. And it is the leader's job to help bring that organization back to some sense of alignment. Transformational leaders know what and who to honor they know what and when to disrupt. Transformational life-giving leaders also know the importance of bringing about alignment in the congregation around its vision. So it's a holy trinity is what I call it, honor, disrupt, and align. The holy trinity of church transformation. The former uh, CEO and founder co-founder of AOL is Steve Chase, no, Steve Case, and he makes this powerful observation. He says, it's stunning to me what kind of an impact one person can have if they have the right passion, perspective, and are able to align the interests of a great team. If they're able to align the interests of a great team. You know, most of us in seminary were not taught to do that. <laughs> Far from it. And um, we just, so we got to figure this out. Um, and the truth is, truth be told, most of us are so n nice and conflict adverse that it's really hard for us to push for disruption and realignment in our churches. So we settle for, you know, we settle for kind of a false harmony um, over the calamity of, that comes sometimes with purposeful change. The irony here is that the only way out of this sort of stuckness, this high anxiety, this kind of de <laughs> depressed lethargy that most of our congregations experience today is to introduce the disruption and the realignment that is around God's uh, preferred future for our congregation, uh, that is around the mission that God is leading our church toward.
And you know what? Most major denominations know this. And they're saying, we can't just continue to kind of bob along in, in our churches anymore, losing our members and losing our market share of ministry in the context in which we're serving. And so denominations are, are saying that are requiring congregations to get pretty specific about their ministry plans and, to, and pastors to get really clear about SMART goals and what it is that God is calling you to do in that setting and uh, with some sort of accountability built in. And so that's what I really am focusing on in this section on alignment. Um, and I'm going to be pushing you a bit to, to sharpen your SMART goals as the pastor of the church uh, to support uh, alignment of the congregation. And, um, and it's really alignment around the God-sized stuff that needs to happen in the congregation outside the daily routines of, of ministry, you know, preparing sermons and visiting people and counseling and weddings and all of those things. The prophet Isaiah is the one who says that where there is no parish, where there is no, uh, mm, where there is no vision, the people will perish. And it's Rick Warren, the guy at Saddleback, you know, who wrote Purpose Driven Life and Purpose Driven Church, who says, he was fond of saying, where there is no vision, the people will perish. Or they'll go down the street to another parish. <laughs> One that's aligned around the vision. 